Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and welcome to Three Years Ago, a video series where we look back at Overwatch three years ago with either a specific hero, or in this case, a specific event. A lot has changed over the past three years, especially when it came to just the events in Overwatch. Normally I like to do these for heroes, but the events has also evolved as well. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at all the changes, all the things that came about the Summer Games event, and just give you a snapshot of what it was three years ago. Traveling back three years ago to the year of 2016, it was not only an interesting year in the Overwatch world, but also the real world as well, because the Olympics were being held at the same exact time in Rio, Brazil. So to celebrate this extravagant moment, Jeff Kaplan and the Overwatch team went to work to make something that would ultimately change Overwatch's future for the better, which they have already done in the past by making such an excellent FPS shooter and already bringing a new hero, which was named Ana, free for the Overwatch community. But they weren't slowing down on the DLC anytime soon because on August 2nd, 2016, when the players would log into the game, they started to hear the war cries that would be known as the Summer Games event. The very first Overwatch event finally went live for Overwatch and with it came a bunch of high quality amazing skins. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. In all honesty, we got a few skins and what is gonna be the greatest game mode to ever go. <laughs> While I'm making a bunch of jokes and laughing at what came at the 2016 Summer Games event, you have to remember that it was the very first Overwatch event. There was a lot of growing pains, a lot of room to go up from here, which they would soon do with the Halloween event. But we're not talking about the Halloween event, what is considered to be the greatest event in Overwatch's history. We're talking about what is probably the worst event, at least in today's standards, the 2016 Summer Games event. Now for today's standards, people expect six to eight legendary skins, new game modes, a bunch of new maps, whereas in 2016, we got six new legendary skins, three of which are the heroes that actually have those six legendary skins, and a bunch of epic skins that were more or less country oriented. Because again, the Summer Games event was inspired from the Olympics, they just didn't have the copyright for the Olympics, but we all knew this was the inspiration behind it. But Overwatch wanted to really have this every single year where the Olympics were held every four years. So it was a little bit awkward, but at the time it made sense. So it made even more sense to have more country skins like with Genji from Japan or the Swedish Torbjorn skin or what is my personal favorite skin from this time period, American McCree. So that's why there was a lot more epic skins than legendary skins because there was a lot more representation of countries in the form of these heroes. But that doesn't mean there weren't any legendary skins, but this was at a time period where Overwatch was still figuring out their skin system because more or less they would have one theme for a hero and make two skins around that same theme just with two different color palettes. And that's what they did with the legendary skins here with Zarya, Lucio, and Tracer, where they gave Tracer a country skin, but also a summer game skin. They gave Zarya two Russian skins? Uh, but then they also gave Lucio two Lucio ball skins, one from the Brazil theme and one from the summer games theme. Yeah, I really don't know why they did this with legendary skins, both the base legendary skins and the event skins. I'm so glad they stopped doing this. But along with the skins came a bunch of other cosmetic items, over a hundred in total. Man, how nice would it be if we could receive that every single year. Now we're more or less lucky if we get 50 items. The best part about this is that it wasn't behind a paywall. This was a free event for everyone to experience. You just had to unlock these items through loot boxes or through credits that you saved up. But nobody was expecting this, so you probably didn't have any credits saved up at this point. And I'm so glad they kept the same system for the events, making it free for everyone where you didn't have to pay $15 or $20 just to get this quote unquote DLC. You just had to get all the items through loot boxes, but you can at least get free loot boxes if you were to play the event game mode or just any other part of the Overwatch game, which is competitive or quick play. But at least here, you got a free new game mode, which is Lucio Ball which not a lot of people liked. <laughs> Around the same time frame, there was a very popular video game that a lot of people were comparing the two and saying that Overwatch copied. It was called like Ship Association or you drove around these carts and you kicked a football into the home run. It's like, I, I don't really know off the top of my head. Please sense my sarcasm, but a lot of people were saying that Overwatch copied this exact video game. Y'all thought Fortnite copied Overwatch with their skins and their guns? Well, Overwatch was kind of guilty of this at one point also. <laughs> but nonetheless, this was a limited time game mode which featured our favorite hero in Overwatch, which was Lucio, Lucio, and Torbjorn. Wait. 
Torbjorn! Yeah, there was a bug in the system which allowed you to play Lucio Ball with other heroes. We'll get to that in a bit, but going back to the beginnings of Lucio Ball, yeah, not a lot of people liked it. One, because it quote-unquote cop, I'm not even gonna say quote-unquote, it pretty much got inspired from the same exact video game released around the same time, and it wasn't all too thrilling. The whole objective of this game was that three Lucios were on each side, or ideally three Lucios were on each side, and you went after this big giant ball, and you booped it around, hoping that you would make a goal kind of sounds similar to Spaceship Association, doesn't it? <laughs> but I mean, there were these bouncy pads which allowed you to get a little bit more height and speed, kind of like Spaceship Association. Yeah, this is just like Rocket League, isn't it? But that's all that you really need to know to understand what Lucio Ball was like in 2016, because it's not all too different than how it is now in 2019. Yeah, we did get a few new maps, like with the 2017 Summer Games event, we got Sydney Harbor, and in 2018, we did get the new Busan map in correlation of the regular multiplayer map Busan, and the bouncy pads did change from yellow to green. Don't really understand why they did that or why they wouldn't do that to begin with, because the pitch is green to begin with, so it match perfectly, but there was actually one major change to the game mode which would make the experience a lot more thrilling, and that was towards Lucio's Ultimate. We all know Lucio's Ultimate normally grants you a temporary shield, but that's not what it was like in Lucio Ball. No, in Lucio Ball there is no point to have a temporary shield because it's not like you were gonna get shot at or die, right? Right? No, Lucio's ultimate in Lucio Ball 2016, when activated, would actually suck the ball closer to you. You would get the big suck from a big ball. <laughs> Pause. The thing about this ultimate is that it wasn't fun to use. You think about Lucio's ultimate nowadays, it's so fun, it's so thrilling, you clench your butt cheeks every single time you activated it, you're just going at the speed of light, going fast like Sonic, you're shooting the ball and it ultimately gets blocked. But it's still fun to use at the end of the day. <laughs> Here with this ultimate, yeah, we get the ball sucked closer to us, but we still go just as slow unless we have our amp it up ability. But if we waste it, which more or less you usually did, then you're gonna go really slow. So that was the problem with this game mode is that it was very boring, it was very slow, and you didn't have that thrill factor with your ultimate like what you did with Genji's ultimate regular multiplayer or Winston's ultimate multiplayer. Here, you get sucky ball. <laughs> but there was actually one feature in Lucio Ball that was not intentional, which added that thrilling factor that so many people seeked in Lucio Ball. And there was a bug which allowed you to switch off of Lucio onto any hero. Now, how you would perform this glitch is that after you were to score a goal in the replay, you would be spamming H, which in multiplayer, if you were in the spawn room or if you were just watching a replay of your death, that would allow you to switch onto a different hero. Now, again, this wasn't intentional and you're not able to do this anymore, but if you would spam H enough times, it would select a different hero other than Lucio, and all these heroes had their regular abilities and had the ability to kill Lucio. The only hero that couldn't fight back these enemies was Lucio! So that means if you chose Reinhardt, if you chose Reaper or Soldier, all you had to do was just shoot the Lucio, they would die, and in the seven seconds of that respawn time, you could just shoot the ball and get a free point. Yeah, this broke Lucio Ball, dog. <laughs> this is an oversight that you just kind of scratch your head out because even nowadays in the game browser, anybody could deactivate the heroes. So why wouldn't Blizzard do this just in case there was a bug which allowed players to switch off of a hero other than the hero that this game mode was intended for? I, I just don't understand it. But again, this was the only thrilling factor about Lucio Ball back in the day because you knew if you saw the Torbjorn on the other side that you were allowed to switch onto another hero and just go after each other. Meanwhile, the only Lucios that had integrity that didn't switch are just trying to score a goal and oh, they got shot at. They died. It was so funny, dog. <laughs> but other than just improvements to Lucio Ball, whether it was bug fixes, a new ultimate, new maps, or a new competitive system, along with a new skin system that strayed away from that double legendary skin system, or a new loot box system, which made legendary skins a lot more frequent, yeah, the Summer Games event isn't all too different. It's a lot different, dog, and so many people don't really appreciate the improvements that the Summer Games had in its own, but also just Overwatch events. Now, while yes, most of these improvements did come in 2017, I think we're just spoiled on what we received in 2017 that we're expecting it in the third year and now in the fourth year, but don't forget that we're still getting what Blizzard made back then nowadays. While I still hope for new game modes or a bunch of new skins or possibly a new Lucio Ball map at the bare minimum, 
I'm still appreciative of what they done not only in 2016 but in 2017 and also in 2018 and in 2019 while there's a lot of changes I don't think enough people really see the changes that happen over the years and that's the whole point of this video is to be nostalgic to poke fun at 2016 at how bad the event was but to also be thankful for what Blizzard has done I love Overwatch but I especially love the Overwatch events and I hope in 2020 that they do a lot with the Summer Games event because the Olympics are being held that same year too. But until then, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. More Overwatch videos to come, and bye.